Good morning. Daily Bible reading. I'm going to read today from Genesis chapter 30. Now, on the face of it, Genesis 30 is a sorry account of domestic strife and feminine rivalry and deception and um, inter-family dissension. However, in addition to that, and more important than that, I reckon it is uh, an account of God's marvellous and gracious provision for his people, his providence for his people, who are, as we always are, erring and straying and weak. Rachel and Leah are sisters, and they are both the wives of Jacob. They have a rivalry. Leah is a disrespected and disregarded wife who God compensates through blessing. She has lots of sons. Rachel is a loved and adored wife uh, who is jealous of her sister's blessing and who is, um, is blessed in the end by the birth of one son but who, uh, who engages in all kinds of unattractive rivalry with her sister, who is also her fellow wife. We see these two women, the handmaidens of, of uh, Leah and Rachel, bearing children to Jacob, uh, a very wrong domestic arrangement. We know because we have seen the creation ordinance that it's one man and one woman that God created uh, to be the appropriate model for family life. He has not given his clear uh, direction that this should be so at this point in the history of salvation. And so we see an example of the way in which going against that creation ordinance, even in a family of a holy patriarch, uh, that it creates dissension and unhappiness. We also see Jacob uh, acquiring wages for the, I think, 21 years that he has spent working for his uncle Laban. Um, Laban has been blessed for, God, for, for Jacob's sake. He has become enormously wealthy. Jacob, um, through this apparent ruse of exposing uh, different coloured objects to the animals, uh, brings about a state where they give birth to speckled or piebald creatures, which he then takes. Now, this is difficult to explain because we know that exposing animals to uh, various coloured objects may have some sort of effect on them, but it doesn't cause them to give birth to piebald or speckled beasts. The explanation is that this was done uh, in response to a direction from the Lord and that it was therefore a miracle. Jacob may have believed himself to be creating uh, piebald creatures by obeying the Lord uh, in this way but it was actually miraculous and God brought about a situation where Jacob received uh, ample wages, ample recompense for the years and years and years that he had spent working for his uncle for nothing. Um, Laban you will notice got keeping lots of animals and lots of uh, possessions as well so they were both blessed but Jacob was blessed more and Laban's deceit and Jacob's deceit well they were part of God's plan they didn't uh, they didn't obstruct God's plan and they demonstrate God's providence and graciousness towards us that it isn't based on our goodness but is instead based on his uh, his favour. This is a story of God's marvellous, gracious, undeserved providence towards his people. So Genesis chapter 30, this is God's word. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's stead who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. And Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God that hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again and bare Jacob a second son. 
And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah her maid and gave her Jacob to wife. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a son. And Leah said, A troop cometh, and she called his name Gad. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldst thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore shall he lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, God hath given me my hire, because I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. And Leah conceived again and bare Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun. And afterwards she bare a daughter and called her name Dinah. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bare a son, and said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph, and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. And it came to pass, when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go on to mine own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favour in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint me my wages, uh, appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how my, thy cattle was with me, for it was little when thou hadst before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming, and now when shall I provide for mine own house also? And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything, if thou wilt do this thing for me. I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and the speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. And he removed that day the he-goats that were ring straight and spotted, and all the she-goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hands of his sons. And he set three days' journey betwixt himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar, and of the hazel and chestnut tree, and piled white streaks in them, and made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had pilled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle ring streaks speckled and spotted. And Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flocks towards the ring streaked and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flocks by themselves and put them not into Laban's cattle. And it came to pass, whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive, that Jacob led the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feebler were Laban's, and the stronger were Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly, and had much cattle, and maid servants, and men servants, and camels, and asses. And we pray God's blessing on this reading from his perfect word. Fourth noting that although um, Jacob's domestic arrangements were not in keeping with the creation ordinance, yet God uh, graciously acknowledged the children of all his wives as legitimate, including the two who were handmaids. And the four of them were the ancestresses of the children of Israel, but only Leah and Rachel were the ancestresses of the remnant, the Jews who were made up of the tribe of Judah, 
the tribe of Benjamin and the half tribe of Levi. Rachel was the mother of the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin and Leah was the mother of the priestly half tribe of Levi. God provides for his people.